Rhizosorb is redefining what growers expect from phosphate fertilizer. Backed by data and built for performance, Rhizosorb helps reduce phosphorus losses, improve uptake, and boost ROI without increasing input costs. Join the next wave of growers switching to the next generation of phosphorus fertilizers by visiting phospholutions.com. <laughs> Bernard Tobin at the Ag Spray Expo in Jasper, Ontario today, catching up now with Adrian Rivard from Drone Spray Canada. Adrian, how's it going? Great. It's a nice day up here uh, close to Ottawa. It's a nice, warm, sunny day. Yeah, you got lots of folks out here. Just tell us, uh, tell us what you're up to today. Yeah, so right now we're talking about the drones uh, and specific uh, uses with uh, spraying. Uh, again, we're talking about the actual uses and limitations and how well they can work when you use them properly. Uh, how do you know the the great things that they can do uh, it's a new technology that people are really wanting to harness uh, lots of uh, things that you can do in terms of uh, crop nutrition cover crop seeding uh, we do a lot of work in uh, research and development too of a lot of uh, crop protection products uh, even also not a lot of non-agriculture uses uh, treating uh, different uh, use cases um, invasive species is one case or again even uh, spreading predatory bugs. There's lots of interesting new developments for the drones that are coming down the pipeline that are uh, really kind of changing the agriculture landscape. Yeah, let's talk about uh, Drone Spray Canada. Year five, I mean, I've, it's, it's been a breakneck pace. Mm -hmm. Talk about how this business has grown. Yeah, it's gone uh, substantially the uh, last uh, couple of years, especially. Uh, we kind of started out on our farm and uh, outbuilding, and now we've got a uh, 6,000 square foot facility and lots of staff. We've got a couple of branches across Eastern Canada now. Um, so yeah, we're really uh, helping uh, customers understand the drones, uh, servicing them, training them, uh, assisting in sales if it's something that they think is something that they want to use on their farm. Uh, support has really been a big key component of us, but also again educating customers how to use them properly and effectively. Uh, there's a lot of, again, if you just kind of read the brochures, uh, you know, a lot of big claims in terms of uh, spraying, you know, 50, 60 acres an hour is possible, but again, every uh, kind of use pattern is different. Uh, again, if you're uh, in tall corn, you probably want to put a higher gallonage, slow down a little bit. So again, just really kind of showing customers the proper way to do things. And the same thing, if we're talking about a corn field or a soybean field or wheat or versus an orchard or a vineyard, uh, there's lots of different ways that you want to use the drone. It's not kind of a, an all-season tire. There are certain ways you got to set it to do certain mm -hmm. things. Let's talk about rotary drones. Uh, I know they've changed. They've changed a lot in the last four years. We've just seen a new uh, drone from DJI. Um, talk about, I, I guess, the capacity, mm -hmm. your abilities to deliver, target, um, spray with, manage, uh, manage uh, drift. A lot of things have changed and uh, yeah. a lot of things you need to tackle. Yeah, it's uh, again, it's a really uh, dynamic market. It's really interesting. There's always something new. It's never stale. Uh, again, last week, DJI did release the T100, the T70P, and the T25P in their new product line. We don't have an ETA as to actually when we'll see them, uh, maybe again for uh, the next growing season. Uh, the T100 is kind of the Cadillac uh, big daddy that we're going to see. Uh, right now, they're advertising it with a 100-liter spray tank. Uh, the T50 that I have here was the flagship uh, two years ago. Uh, it's got a 40 liter spray tank, so we're going to see a really big uptake in capacity. Again, the T25 here with the uh, four nozzle kit, it can have a maximum output of 24 liters per minute. The T100 right now is advertised with their four nozzle kit to be up to 40 liters per minute. And again, double the speed right now are about 23 mile an hour. The T100 can go up to probably about 45 mile an hour. Yeah, and you've got um, capacity there and speed. Uh, let's talk about, I guess, uh, you know, usage for the drone. Um, Adrian, obviously doing a lot of foliar application, a lot of seeding. Let, let's talk about uh, the label here. Um, I mean, the big chat question is when can we do fungicides and herbicides? Let's, let's start with fungicides. Where are we there? Yeah, uh, again, for the last four years uh, specifically, we've been working extensively with a lot of the major registrants. Uh, a lot of efficacy trials. Uh, again, uh, Tar Spot is the big boogeyman here in uh, Ontario. Uh, down in the south where our head office is, uh, there's some really good honey holes uh, for that are really unfortunate for growers, but great for research. Uh, I know like uh, Albert Tenuta and everybody he focuses in that uh, kind of Rodney area. We've uh, been doing a lot of projects, again, spraying uh, untreated and then titrations up, you know, different gallonages to kind of see uh, efficacy. We follow up with imagery and see kind of how that crop dies down. And again, uh, the labels showing, uh, you know, the manufacturer saying to go spray at a gallon an acre. Well, we're seeing a lot of those treatments fail. You know, we're liking that three, five, you know, depending on the products you're using and coverage. You know, five gallons of the spray drone, we're even seeing is better coverage and control of tar spot than a field sprayer at 20. You know, it's, it's all about how you set it and how you use it.
Right. So, um, so opportunity, obviously, on the fungicide side, especially mm -hmm. with uh, with tire spot. Where are we with herbicides now, uh, Adrian? I know uh, mm -hmm. uh, we've been talking about it for a number of years. Maybe some uh, some trials being done and some labels being developed. Yeah, we are again for the herbicides, uh, more on the non-crop land use. Um, again, their invasive species is a really big concern. Uh, we've been working on some projects for about three years with that. We're hoping the product is uh, going to be labeled in the near future. Uh, there is again an industrial use herbicide that is also labeled right now uh, that can be sprayed on uh, some trees. Uh, it's again going to be a game changer. They're used to going out there with backpacks and sprayers and uh, doing you know a couple of acres every day. We can do that in the morning, and uh, you know we know no one falls or gets wet. Um, <laughs> It's a really nice uh, herbicides on a crop. Uh, again, right now, everybody would really like to see that. Uh, drift is, again, something that you have to manage with the drones. They are far dr far more prone to drift than a field sprayer. Again, and we're talking uh, in an orchard, uh, the air blast sprayers, they're, they make tons of drift. That's what they're built for. Uh, so again, uh, understanding how to use it and uh, how to use it safely. Mm -hmm. Hey, five years uh, you've been at this. Uh, I, I, I should look forward. Where are you going to be in another five years? I, I, we've talked about a lot of things that have to happen. Uh, yeah. uh, give me, do a little blue skying for me. Yeah, it's again uh, the uptake in the uh, in the market's been really uh, high. People again are seeing good returns. We've been putting a foliar on their soybeans and having a ten bushel bump. You know, having no crop uh, compaction, those sort of things. Uh, so the technology is everybody wants it. Uh, again, everybody's very excited for any uh, regulatory, uh, you know, uh, hurdles uh, coming out of the way. We're hoping that can maybe change next year. Uh, where again, there's no promises. Um, but uh, in terms of uh, drones, I don't know if they're going to get any bigger. They're already, uh, you know, the big T100 here is already going to be probably about 170 kilo. Uh, drone that's a pretty big uh, piece of equipment so maybe again we'll see more smaller drones working in teams or again maybe uh, rotary machines will be different maybe we'll be fixed wing we have no idea what the future is going to be um, you know uh, when we started the company we had a little drone kind of like an R2D2 sort of thing and <laughs> uh, you know and now it's basically just collecting dust and uh, kind of just a memory of what it was but you know the there's a lot more AI integrations again the T100 is going to have lidar sensors on it uh, it can see so much more um, again, spot spraying, uh, you know, very much, uh, you know, prescription based or uh, AI driven analytics, um, you know, maybe see and spray will be on the drones, uh, so much more capabilities and we're just scratching the surface. Well, great stuff, Adrian. Appreciate you making some time for real agriculture. No problem. Anytime. <laughs>